truth. Or being yeah. a drunk. I mean, God kept you blessed. God kept you off the streets. God kept somebody from being a prostitute. I mean, God kept you holy. God kept you clean. God kept you from some things. I mean, God will straighten it out if you just listen. Right. Your conversation ought to equal your conduct. Then, watch this. Let me go a little bit deeper. Your consecration. Told you that means separate, separated. I mean, you, you being separate or to usher into, watch this right here, your conversation. Because your, your words change when you separate it. He walked with God in conversation. Amen. That changed his conduct. Then he walked with God in consecration. That can't change his conversation. As a believer, my conversation is in heaven. I got heaven in my view. I know where I'm going. Amen. Right. As a believer, Amen. your conversation ought to be in heaven. It ought to be. Right. And I don't get it right all the time. And you don't get it right all the time. Right. As a father, as a Christian, we often fail and make a lot of mistakes. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all run and say something. Amen. I wish I had one witness there. I know this is rough. I got to say it. Amen. But he says if you confess your sins, He's faithful and judged, amen, to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. My conversation is the way it is this morning because God cleansed me. Your conversation is the way it ought to be, amen, because God cleansed you. Now, has God cleansed you? Everybody don't shout about the end, amen. If God's cleansed you, you ought to holler when you say something about that, amen. Amen. Let me say this. And I'm going to need somebody to read your Bible to help me know what I'm talking about. Y'all shout for me. Everybody may not shout right here. But I need you to help me. You notice, anybody reads the Bible, you notice how different David talked. I ain't got time to say all this. But you know how different David talked after Nathan the prophet left his house? Some of y'all know the story I'm talking about. David thought that his sin had been swept up on the road. Y'all yeah. know all the stuff yeah. David done. I need somebody to help me right here. For a whole yeah. year, because nothing happened, he thought his sin had been expunged or been erased or done away with. But, but, but Nathan, the prophet, he comes and tells him this little story. And I ain't got time to read all of it. I'm just kind of highlighting it. And at the end of that story, the prophet says, O king, you, you are the one. Yeah. Amen. You are the man that I'm talking about. And David, right at that point, he falls on his knees. And in repentance, he writes Psalm 50. Now watch this. Have mercy on me, O God. <laughs> hey! I said, have mercy on me, O God. Amen. Have you ever had to pray that prayer, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Have mercy on me, O God. Amen. According to your multitude of your tender mercy, amen. Blot out all thy transgression against thee. <laughs> and thee, whoo, only have I sinned and done evil in your sight. Purge me, the Bible says, with this up. Amen. Wash me truly from my sins, creating me a clean heart. Have you ever asked God to clean up your heart? Amen. Aunt, look, God, clean my heart. Amen. And renew me with the right spirit. Right. That's something good to read right there when you're going through sometimes. When you, when you want when, when to cuss somebody out or you or you done, done cuss somebody out. Amen. That'd be good right there, God. Creating within me the right spirit. In a clean heart, amen. I know I messed up, but Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me, amen. You need to talk to him, amen. And the only ones that can say something right now is folk that at some point in your life you've had to pray that prayer. I've been down in the dirt, amen. I've been down, and I got a witness right here. I've messed up so bad in times in my life. There's things in my past. I wish I could go back and undo that stuff, amen. But thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. He washed it all away. Amen. He took it all away. I've asked God to create in me a clean heart. Let me have sympathy, God, in my heart for the folk that I want to talk about, but they just really out there doing the same stuff I used to do. Let me have a soft, clean heart toward them so I can help them with what I've been through. Amen. Because when we come to church, Oh my, one reason why they don't want to come to church, they don't want to hang around the church house, is because church folk are too hard on people sometimes. Some of y'all ain't got no grace. Some folk ain't graceful toward nobody, not one bit. Amen. Folk don't want to come hang around no mean people. That's right. Amen. I'm just being real, amen. They don't come in here when we try to 
can't stand and look down our nose at them like we ain't ever done nothing wrong. That's right. Amen. It wasn't long ago you got to do the same thing they do. Amen. 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 I don't want to come and be around that mean people, hard-hearted, ugly acting people. They ain't going to come to that. Amen. They get enough of that on their job. They get enough of that with their husband, amen. Or they get enough of that stuff with their wife or with their family, amen. When they want to come into church, I mean, they want to come to a place where it's warm and graceful, amen, and inviting. Amen. Soft heart, clean hearts over there. Because the world has towed us up all week long, amen. We get got towed up in the world, but from the world, we just don't know which direction to turn in sometimes. And when I come to church, I need to sit beside somebody. I need to be around somebody. I need a neighbor to high five me every once in a while. It encourages me from the stuff I've had to deal with. Yeah, that's right. I don't need to be a mean to right. you. Amen. Now, I don't think, let me say that, I, don't, I don't really don't know what you need this morning. But I know what I need this morning. I got a witness, amen. amen. I said, I don't know. I can kind of think, amen. I, I know what I need. I, I think I know what you need. But I'm going to say it one more time. I don't know what you need this morning. But I'm here because I need mercy. Yeah. I said, I need mercy. I need one or two witnesses, amen, yeah. to help me right here. I need some mercy. Yeah. Anybody else here? I said, is there anybody else here? I'm not talking about stuff from 30 years ago. I ain't talking about stuff from five years ago. I'm talking about stuff we did last week. Amen. I'm talking about stuff we said last week. I'm talking about stuff we talked about last week. Stuff God could have took us out for. That's right. Amen. Amen. Created me. Clean mind and heart. Lord, help me. But let us come in here this morning with a different conversation. If any man be in Christ, He's a new creation. Right? It's a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things whoo, are becoming new. Amen. Are you a new creature this morning? Amen. Yeah. Now, let me back up and say it one more time. I want y'all to get this. Amen. If you write it down, write this down. My conversation has got something to do with my conduct. My consecration has got something to do with my conversation. But my being consistent has something to do with my commitment. My commitment. Noah walked with God in a consecrated way. Consecrated, converted, committed. That was a steady walk. Do you have a steady walk this morning? Or are you just in and out there once in a while? Pop in, pop back out. Come on, help me right here, somebody. Are, 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 you, are, are you in a steady walk with the Father? Amen. Amen. A steady walk. No matter what the forecast, no matter what's going on. Now, let me say it like this. I'm, 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 I'm getting there. I'm, 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 I'm ready. I see the, I see the lights. The plane got landing gear down. We coming in. I see. It. We all know. You would probably ain't a good illustration this time of year. But y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all know how crazy we get that in the south, amen. Y'all all know how we act when the weatherman talking about it gonna snow in the winter time. Yeah. You know what we do? <laughs> we all rush to the store and buy bread yeah. and a gallon of milk. And water, make sure we got gas for the generator. That's right. And it snowed it gone in two days. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but we do that every time they mention snow because in the south, we're just hoping it's going to snow a little bit. But 99.9% of the time, the weatherman, he just cried wolf all week long. Yeah. They talking about it's going to rain too full. We don't even get it dusting. Amen. So when it don't snow, you know how they are on TV. They try to fix it up and say, well, it's just a forecast. It went up, it went down, it went around because, watch this, because they cry wolf all the time and it don't snow, the next time, perhaps we may not heed the word. Yeah. There might be a big storm coming in. We just, ah, they don't talk about it. They ain't going to snow. And brothers and sisters, I say that to say this. The danger we're here in preaching is if you're not careful, you, you become so numb and don't heed the warning. Mm -hmm. You don't hear anything that nobody's saying. And really and truthfully, I know, and I know, and I know, and I always will. I can't help it. I say the same thing so often that some of y'all don't even hear what I'm saying no more. You don't even hear what I'm saying. But hear me, brothers and sisters. Hear me well. It's going to rain. I'm telling you, it's going to rain. And this time, it ain't going to be water. It's going to be fire. Yes. It's going to rain. The judgment of God 
is going to come on this sinful nation. I'm telling you right now, I don't know when. I'm not no, I'm not no modern day prophet. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be next week. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be next year. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's coming. It's coming. I'm telling you right now, it's going to rain. But he tells me, whew, in his word. But if my people, hey, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, amen, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Amen. The church needs to be praying, brothers and sisters. We don't need to be trying to act like the world and be part of the world, amen. We need to be praying. We need to be seeking God, amen, so he can heal our land, amen. If you're going to be a successful father, you got to walk with God. Man, y'all say, I didn't even tell you the points. I done blow right on through. The first one was, you got to walk with God. <laughs> then, you got to witness to others. You got to tell them what they want to hear. And then, you got to be able to tell them what they don't want to hear. Yeah. You got to be bold, amen. You got to tell it at the schoolhouse. You got to be able to tell it in the line at the grocery store or Walmart when you're checking out. Amen. You got to be, if God opens the door, I'm not saying, I, I'm not one to just go in there and say, hey man, if you ain't saved, you're going to hell. I don't, I don't do everybody, but God swings the door open. Amen. I witness to others. Amen. Don't do that, they'll run you out of Walmart. But you got to tell it on your job. You got to tell it in the schools. You got to tell it in the line at the grocery store. Amen. You got to tell it everywhere you go. Amen. And use words. If necessary. Somebody gonna get that on the way home. Yes, that's right. You gotta tell it everywhere you go. Yes. And use words if necessary. Mm -hmm. Preach and witness everywhere you go. And use words if necessary. Mm -hmm. yes. But the best sermon, the best sermon you'll ever be able to preach is a consecrated, a consistent, a consecrated lifestyle. The best sermon. Is being separate. Let people see your lifestyle, how you live. That's right. And my brothers and sisters, when I go to sleep one of these days and I go home to the Father, I want my children to be able to say, my daddy made some mistakes. He didn't do half everything he should have done right. He didn't do everything right. He done some things right. But he taught me by his walk about the Lord. Amen. He didn't have to say nothing. Amen. I just watched him keep on walking. He taught me how to walk with God. His walk taught me how to live my way to be pleasing to God. Pleasing in the sight of God. And listen, brothers and sisters. I worry about my children for a long time. I still worry about them. I ain't talking about I don't worry about them. But look, sometimes they don't stick the first time. Just keep on praying for them. Just keep on. Amen. I, I said keep on praying for them. Yes. You got to keep on saying you got to keep on walking right in front of them. Keep on living right in front of them. And, 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 and when they do make a mistake, when they do mess up, don't act like you ain't ever made a mistake. Right. Don't act like you ain't made none. I wish I had one witness right here with me. Love them to the place, amen, that'll get them back on the back track because somebody loved you to the place that got you on the right track. Amen. amen. You got to keep on loving. You want to be a successful father? You got to walk with God. Amen. Amen. Woo. You got to witness to others. And I'm proving that for real. Amen. Mm -hmm. No one not only walked with God and witnessed to others, but he won his family. He won their respect by his walk and his witness. Amen. Yeah, amen. That's how he won their respect. He won their respect because when the ark was finished, they followed him inside. Mm -hmm. He won their respect. They followed him right on in. And brothers and sisters, you ought to do everything you can this morning to get your children to follow you into the ark. Amen? Yeah. Woo, fear not. Mm. I ain't talking about cypress wood right now, though, about getting them in the ark. I'm not talking about an ark like Noah built. I want my children to follow me to church. I want them to follow me to this ark or the other ark when we move up the street. Amen? I want my children to walk with God. You ought to want your children to walk with God. Amen. I want my children to know that I love the Lord. Amen. Does your walk represent that you love the Lord in front of your children? Just think about it. Look, my, my children might say, my daddy, he didn't go to college. He didn't even finish high school. Amen. I mean, there's a lot of things. But I hope one day that they can say he was a successful father because he walked 
with the Lord. That's right. And I want my kids to say, amen, I know whose side my daddy's on. Amen. That's right. He's on the Lord's side. Amen. Right. What are they going to say about you? Whose side are you on this morning? Are you on the Lord's side or are you on the other side of the world? Amen. Whose side are you on? And I wish I had somebody help me close. I'm done right here. He witnessed to others. Amen. And he won his family. Amen. You want to be a successful father? Walk with God. Witness to others and win your family. Win your family. Amen. Right. That's a beautiful sight. That's a beautiful sight to see a family walk in church. This whole family over here walk in church together. That's a beautiful sight. Amen. Amen. That's a beautiful sight. Bring that family to church. Amen. I'm glad y'all are here. You got to come back. I know who you are. I'm going to come see where you live. Amen. I'm coming to get you. Amen. So when you do that, amen, you're saying, when you walk, when you look, when you walk boldly into the house of God, you're saying to the world, amen, it's for me and my house. Yep. Hey, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Yeah. And I wish I had a successful father sitting in here with me, or maybe somebody watching online, amen, that helped me close this little message, amen. Noah made some mistakes. Don't worry about the mistakes you made, amen. I told you, he got drunk in front of his children. He got naked in front of his grandchildren. But God still used him. I said, God still used him. And there's somebody listening right now, amen. I don't know who you are. Like myself, has made some mistakes in your life. Yeah. But like me, amen, God still chooses to stand me up on Sunday morning, amen. amen. And use me in his service, amen. I still going to say that one more time. It ain't nothing I do. God stands me up and uses me because I have no ability in my own flesh, amen. But I can go ahead and tell you right now, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, amen. I'm not ashamed of a testimony, amen. I'm not ashamed to let somebody know I once was lost in sin, amen. Woo! But Jesus took me in and then a little light of heaven filled my soul and bathed my heart in love, amen, and wrote my name, wrote my name above. I wish I had one witness right here to tell me, amen, a little talk with Jesus makes everything all right, amen. 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 Have I got a witness that right here to tell me I do my best to walk with God the best I can. Amen. But sometimes I stumble. Sometimes I might fall down. But then God is right there to pick my crazy self right back up again. Dust me off and tell me to run on a little bit more. Amen. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can to yeah. witness to somebody. Amen. Yeah. To tell a lost man or a woman there's a way. Watch this one. We got to tell them there's a way that seems right. Amen. But the end thereof is ways of death. Amen. We got to warn them. Amen. And then surely we're trying to win the members of our family. We're trying to win them because I don't want to go in the ark by myself. Amen. I want my family to go in the ark with me. I want to bring as many people in the ark That's as we right. can. Amen. Amen. Woo, to meet this man called Jesus Christ. Amen. Woo. I don't want to just enjoy salvation by myself. Amen. Hey, there's enough of it to go around. Amen. There's plenty of salvation to go around for everybody. And thank yeah. God for mercy and grace. Amen. I want somebody to know how good God really is. Yeah. How good God really can be in your life. I need somebody trying to be a successful father this morning. Amen. Woo. Just walking with God. Amen. Just talking with God. Even though you're stumbling and fall sometimes. Amen. Amen. And while you're trying to witness to others, even though they don't want to hear what you say, amen, just keep on telling them anyway, amen. But then thank God, whoo, I, I'm, not only am I trying to win my family, I know my family's saved, amen. That gives me peace that passes all understanding down in my soul, amen, because don't worry about it if they don't get it all right at first, amen, because when you read the Bible, it had to start in Jerusalem first. Then go on to Judea, amen. Then Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the world, amen. Just keep on talking. Let it keep on spreading, amen. And I need a witness to help me right here who's walking with God. Look, you're witnessing to somebody else. Are you winning members of your own family, amen? I thank God my child is sitting in church this morning, amen, because amen. somebody told me the good news. I'm going to keep on telling my kids, my family, this congregation, news about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, if you know, amen, y'all know where I'm just to go. I mean, I can't I can't help myself. I'm going to close just like this, like I always do. I'm going to say the same thing this Sunday that I said last Sunday. Amen. And I'm going to say the same thing next Sunday that I'm going to say this Sunday. Amen. I'm going to keep on saying it. Y'all know what I'm getting ready to say. He was born in Bethlehem. Amen. He was reared in Nazareth. He was baptized in the Jordan. He performed miracles in a desert place. He wept over Jerusalem. Amen. Look, he prayed in Gethsemane. He died. Didn't he die? Amen. amen. But right early, Sunday morning, amen, he got yeah. up with all power in his hand. Amen. He rose from the grave. Amen. Yeah. Is there anybody walking with God? Amen. If you're walking with God, why don't you just high five somebody and tell them, amen, hey, I'm walking with God. Amen. Yeah. Shake your other neighbor's hand or give them a
this. Give them an elbow five, amen. Tell them, I'm trying to be a witness, amen. amen. Yes. Is there anybody, anybody that's witnessing to your family? Is there anybody? I'm glad my children is in church, amen. I'm glad they're coming to church, amen. I'm glad this morning my brothers and sisters are in church, amen. I'm glad I got friends that go to church, amen. And if God's been good to you, why don't you tell somebody how good God's been, amen. Amen, good God this morning, amen. Yes, yes. This joy yes. that I have deep down inside, tell them the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away, amen. God is going to keep on blessing your life the longer you keep on walking and witnessing, telling others about Amen. Amen. Yes. You ain't gonna make it without it. You'll never be a successful father without it. You'll never make it without Jesus Christ leading your life. Amen. You can't walk with him. You can't walk with him without, without witnessing about him. If you walk with him, you can't help but tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. If you can't witness about him without winning others to him. Because when you talk about him, and they see what he's done to you. They're going to want some of it. Amen? Yes. Because he tells us that his word is not going to return forward. All we got to do is just put it out there. Right. It's going to do what it's going to do. Amen? Right. It's just like a hungry lion. Amen? You ain't yeah. got to do nothing but turn it loose. <laughs> That's just like the word. All you got to do is just turn it loose. Amen? Right. You witness to somebody. Amen? Let God take care of the rest of it. Right. The problem is, the problem I see with church folk this day and time, and we think we can fix everything ourselves. Yeah. We, we, we really think we can fix it. We really don't trust that God has the power to take care of all our problems. We don't trust the Word still has the power. I hear them talk out there. I ain't talking about us. I'm just talking about out there. That's the problem with the world. They don't, they don't believe in the power of the, of the Spirit. They don't think Jesus can come in and fix this stuff for them. They think they got to handle it for themselves. They think we got to have some kind of schemes. we got to have something to... Uh, uh, a program. Uh, we got to have some tricks. Here you go, Bastard. We got to have some bait. Amen. Got to have some bait to catch somebody. Oh, I got some bait, all right. I got it, baby. It'll catch them right there. All you got to do is just put it out there and let them have it. Amen. Yeah. Because if the word of Jesus Christ, the words of our Lord and Savior, if God's word can't save them, they ain't nothing going to save them. Right. Right. I said, ain't nothing going to save them. The church is a living. Breathing, singing, breathing. I ain't say breathing. She always laughs when I put the F on. Breathing. Active, dy dynamic body of Christ. That's what we are. And there's no such thing as a Christian who is not walking with God. Well, that's settled just for a second. Amen. There's no such thing as a Christian that is not walking with God. Amen. Didn't say you wasn't going to have struggles. Struggles. Didn't say you wasn't going to have troubles. Didn't, didn't say you was going to have hard times in your life. I'm just telling you, if, if, if you're really walking with God, amen, if you're really walking with God, it's going to show. A true Christian is going to shine. That little bit of light will shine. And to be honest with you, I think we're all broken sometimes, but that's the only way the light can get out sometimes. Because you got it on the inside, but can't nobody see it on the outside. And God allows that trouble to come along in your life and breaks you a little bit. So that some of that light can get out. You'll help somebody with what you've been through. Amen. Right. Can't be a Christian when you're walking. With, I mean, you're, you're, you can't call yourself a Christian if you're walking with God and you're not witnessing about others. Amen. Right. Something wrong with your witness if you're not winning. I'll say it one more time. Something wrong with your witness if you're not winning. Successful father, we need to be witnessing to our family. Something wrong with your walk if you're not witnessing the women. Close right here. It's Noah was a, success, a successful father with all his faults and mistakes. This gives me hope, brothers and sisters, because I know all my faults and mistakes and mishaps in my life. Things in my past, I mean, I try to keep it right and tight 99.9% .9 of the time, but, uh, you know, we live in a flesh and a body. We are here. We're real. Amen? Amen? We talk about that all the time. We're real. The world needs something real. Amen. They need to see some real transparent people. We, 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 we just jack up and blow up sometimes. Amen. Ooh. That's right. I ain't hear nobody. He was a successful father, though. Noah was, and you will be, because he walked with God. Hey. He witnessed to others. And he warned his family. He walked with God. 
He witnessed others and he won his family. Dennis, where y'all at this morning? I have to do a reality check myself sometimes. Where you at in your walk? What does your family see in your walk that separates you and makes you different? I didn't say you didn't have trouble. I didn't say we didn't have our moments. We all, we all have our moments. But at the end of the day, what is your lifestyle? What is your life, the way you live and walk and talk and say to your children? What does it say to your family? If somebody bowed up against you in Walmart, would anybody even know you were a Christian? How would you handle the situation now? There's different ways we're handling it. Yeah. We're going to handle it right in the beginning. Amen. Don't keep on. Yeah. yeah. Just be real. Hey. But what if somebody runs into your buggy or something? Somebody cuts you off. Been like man in Lowe's yesterday. When he get out of the way, I said, excuse me, sir. He looked at me like I done lost my mind. And I wanted to say something. Matter of fact, I was bundled when I walked off to myself. And if I'd have showed myself right there in Lowe's, what would that have done to my witness and to my testimony? Yeah. What if I'd have popped off and said something? Right. What if you'd have popped off and said something? What would it have said about you to your family and to your witness in front of others? On the job, Walmart, anywhere in the world, what does your witness say? Don't you think about it just for a second. If there's some things that need to change in your life, it's never too late. It's never too late to change your walk. It's never too late to change your talk. But some of us have to, we have to reevaluate that pretty often. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing, amen. I know y'all cuss every once in a while. It's all part of our testimony. Because what's really in the way of gonna come up. But I bet you everything that's in the way of gonna come up no more. If you walk it and witness it. Reaching others for Jesus Christ, I'm telling you right now, that stuff won't come up. It, 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 it gets, it, this is the way it works. Right. The yeah. job. Because you want to so bad sometimes. Say, ah, oh, it's okay. The Lord's over here on this side. I don't want any testimony on that. It ain't worth all that. My brothers, I'll say it one more time, and I'm through. Close. What is your walk? say about your life. What in your life did God put his hand on and change to make your walk better? See, that's what I ask the Lord all the time. I say, Lord, whatever it takes in my life to get you where you want me to be. If you have to remove some things, if there's some things that's not in my life you got to take away, take them. And that's not an easy prayer sometimes. Because God will lose the things out of your life you thought was good for you. What's in your life you need to remove today? This altar's open. Come on down and do business with it this morning. Would you come? Is there some things in your life God needs to remove? Is there some things in your conversation God needs to change? Is there a way in your talk, your walk, that God needs to work on? He knows all about it. He's just waiting on you. Come take it. That's right. You can come to this altar one way, and when you get up and walk, your conversation has changed. Because you'll be separated. You'll be consecrated from those things that you used to have in your life. But you can leave them all right here. See, so here's our problem. We leave it. We leave that stuff. And before we get to the door, yeah, you're right. Yeah, we come back and pick some of that stuff up. And Satan's out there. I tell you all the time, he's out there sitting on the back of the car. Like he's propped up, got his leg on his big long jenny sling on one twenty. He knows. Yeah, he knows. Yeah. 
weeks. Maybe months. Come on, God. Come on, let's pray. Give it to the Lord this morning. Be separated when you walk. Be a witness. Consistent has something to do with my commitment to Jesus Christ in my life. And I told you, brothers and sisters, this I'm, I'm finished. Noah walked with God in a consecrated, converted, committed life, a steady lifestyle with God. Did he make mistakes? He sure did. But he got up and he continued on with the glory of God. Amen. That's what we have to do. Amen. Let me ask a question. Maybe there's somebody sitting here this morning who don't have a separated life yet. You're still living in the world. You're of the world. And you've heard of this man named Jesus Christ, but you've never fully trusted in him and asked him to be your Savior, the Lord of your life. If that's you this morning, I just want to pray with you. Finish right here. I just want to pray. I don't want to leave anybody behind. All heads by and eyes are closed this morning. If you're sitting here lost this morning and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you had not asked him to come into your heart and save you. You know, it's truly just a matter of believing in who he is and what he's done. That's what he says. Believe. If that's you this morning, if you believe that, I want to pray with you. Just pray to him. You tell him, Father, I know I'm a sinner. God, I know the wages of sin is dead. I understand that. But God, if I die without you, I understand that I would spend spending my life eternity with me in hell. God, I choose. God, I choose to believe in what you've done for me. God, I trust you. I trust the work that was finished on the old rugged cross. That bloodshed that covered my sin. God, I believe that this morning. The Bible says, Whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Father, I'm a whosoever this morning. I'm calling on you. I'm ready to settle this thing. I'm ready to nail it down. I'm ready to get it right. God, would you save me this morning? Here I am. Here I am. If anybody prayed that prayer, would you slip up one thing and say, Preacher, I prayed that prayer. I'm not coming to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to sing with you out of nothing. I just want to pray for you. Preacher, I pray. Pray for me. Anybody. Father, we thank you today for your presence, Father. God, I thank you, God, for, for reminding me. God, through your word, Father, God, we can live a separated life. 
and be a witness for you in a world that's lost and dying and going to hell, Father. God, I love you. God, I thank you for your spirit, Father. I thank you for everything that, God, that you're doing in everybody's life that walks through these doors. God, I'm thankful for every family that's represented yes. here today. God, I just thank you for the people that you see. And God, I just pray, Father, as we leave this place today, God, you'd help us in our walk. God, you'd help us in our talk. God, you'd help us to be a better witness, Father. God, hey. we, this God, we, our, our walk, the way we live, would be enough, Father. We wouldn't have to say a word. Yes. God, I thank you this morning. God, I just thank you for the for the for the doors and the opportunities you, you continue to put before us, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Y'all would, would would you come forward this morning? Would y'all come down, let's have a prayer right quick before we leave. Oh, uh, I want to pray for Brother Bobby. Hey. And the Murphy family. I want to pray for Brother Jimmy. Miss Renee. God, we humble ourselves before you today, Father. God, I thank you, God, for our congregation and our church family. God, I just pray, Father, for the ones now, Father, that's, God, had to, some very hard days this week, Father. Uh, God, Brother Bobby, he, he lost his mother this week. Yeah. And God, they had to go through the, the, through the, uh, the last couple of days, Father, God, uh, Taking her off the, the breathing machine and God, whatever else that she was connected to, Father, and had to put her hand, put her in God's hand, Father. God, I pray, Father, for the, for the comfort for the family, Father, knowing that, God, that she's so much better off than heaven right there running the streets of gold this morning. God, don't make it no easier when we have to sit through that service, Father, God, say our goodbyes. God, I pray for that family. God, I pray, Father, that you heal her heart, Father. God, you just help them, God, in the next days to come. And Father, I just pray right now for Miss Renee. Uh, and I pray for Brother Jimmy. Uh, God, I pray that you touch her body. God, you touch her, Father. God, you heal her, Father. Hey. Tip of her head and the soles of her feet. God, she just be able to just, God, just, just get up and just, God, just walk on in her life and live a normal life. And just from here on out, it'd be your will. Uh, God, we trust in you, Father. God, we know you have the power. God, I just pray for Brother Jimmy right now, Father. You give him strength, Father. Uh, or whatever I, I know what he's had to go through this week and father i know the the, the the hard times that he is sitting in the hospital and wondering and not knowing what the doctor's going to say and god i just pray to give him strength and understanding god continue to guide him oh he's such, such a, 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 a vital huge part of this church father god give him the wisdom beyond his means father oh god to help us in the days to come father god we just love you god i lift these up to you father god i lift them the ones up this morning, Father, that, that may not have a father figure in their life. Or God may have lost their father. May not even know who their father is. But God, that would, God, that you would comfort them in the days of, of, in times like this, Father, when it is Father's Day and, and they have a heavy heart because they don't have that person in their life, Father. God, just be with them.